According to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and asked, knelt down before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not kill. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not bear false witness. You should not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all these I've observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking one thing. Go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At that statement, his face fell, he went away sad. He had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words, so Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, and who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. The gospel of the Lord. Praise It's nice that, that everybody's here, and so we're going to talk about faith. Just what is faith? Faith is what one believes in. And so, what, what in, faith is what you believe in, and you want to have trust in somebody, if you have trust, then you have faith, and you want to be near them and, and uh, do for somebody that you like them to do. But there's two faiths, there's a human faith and there's a spiritual faith. Now the question is, do they become one? I'll, have, I'll tell you that afterwards, okay? <laughs> But for human faith, a good example is this. A friend of yours or mine came to me and said, or to you, and said, I'm in trouble, I need a hundred dollars. Will you lend it to me? That since this person there was a real good friend of ours, we trusted him. And we decided, oh, all right, we'll give you the $100. And it, it, he says that he'll pay me next week, so that's okay. So next week came, no $100. Two weeks came, no $100. Three weeks came, no $100. The man lied to us. So that's where, where you cannot trust even your friends with human trust. Sometimes we fail. But the other faith is spiritual. You can never fail in, in spiritual faith for the simple reason the Holy Spirit is there. 
Now, when I was young, and some of you older people can understand this, we had the Great Depression, we had the World War II, and we had hard times. We were waiting to be drafted. We had to go to war. Some made it, some didn't. We came back. But in the meantime, our country got love in their hearts. They start praying, they went to church again. And the Holy Spirit came and made the United States a place for freedom, a place for love and everything else. And then something happened. All of a sudden, what do we have? We got children in the streets. We got kids getting killed. We, we, the, this, we, we're, we're in trouble. Oh, men are we in trouble. We, the Holy Spirit has left us for some reason, and we got to get the Holy Spirit back. We've got to, instead of the, the, the people telling us in the group, in the, in the high places, well, we got to get rid of guns, we got to get rid of this, we got to get rid of that. No, the first thing we got to do is get the Holy Spirit in everybody, and especially in the families that is doing all this stuff. If the family has the Holy Spirit, and we, the God is put in their family, and we teach these young kids to do right, to do wrong, that is the, the, the thing. You got to do the right thing, and it's the parents that's got to do it. And then we can do something. You know, people don't understand one thing. They think that that, uh, something, uh, that people don't care, but that some people do. But they do not what they're supposed to do, be and read prayer or things like that. You know, at one time, a person could go, and it happened to me. I went to my first car, the first car I ever bought. I went to the dealer, and I, I looked around, and the dealer said, I found the car, and the dealer says, Ralph, do you like this? Oh, yeah, I like it. He said, would, would you like it to buy it? And I says, uh, oh, yeah. He, he says, uh, this is the price. Uh, is that satisfactory? Yes. He took his hand, put it out to me, he shook my hand, he says it's a deal. That's how I bought the first car. And that was in Crystal Lake, believe it or not. Now, what, what's the difference between me and the first one we talked about? He was a living, spiritual, church-going man and family. And this is what we need. We need to tell our children about God. We should pray with them. If they do wrong, you, you tell them. Jesus taught you that and you can't do that. You don't take away things from your, your brother or your sister. You don't hurt your brother or your sister. See, our, our country right now is in a heck of a mess. The world's in a heck of a mess. And we have to stop that, and we have to do it through prayer and the Holy Spirit and spread the word to the people that do not have it. And now that brings us to one thing right now, the gospel. You just heard the gospel about the, the man in front of Jesus and asked, what can I do to get into heaven? And he had to, and he couldn't do it because he was rich. And then, and then Jesus was talking about it's hard to uh, a rich man to get to heaven because of his riches. Uh, and that, well, the, the point of the story is this: he's, he's not saying because you're rich you can't, can't get to heaven. It's that once you got money and you want more money. It's now God is your, is your money. 
That's your God. And you forgot about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's what our Lord is saying. That's why it's hard to get into heaven. And I'm asking you, or me, what does God ask me? What are you lacking? You're lacking something. Can we ask, tell them what we're lacking? All of us. We got something huh, that we've done, we haven't done, or we haven't done it yet. Now we have to, add, can we answer to the Lord and say, I did this? No, we can't. But if we do something wrong, what have we got as Catholics, good serving Catholics who are, who are, who are priests, our whole parish, the whole thing, who have we got to help us? You see those three, four people behind me, those priests there? That's God helping us. God right there. The ordination of the priesthood, they are bound to make us go free by saying, your sins are forgiven. And once our sins are forgiven, then we can go ahead and teach other people. We gotta teach the youngsters. And we don't teach the youngsters, my friends. Our country has gone worse. It's bad enough now. So, and in closing here, I like to say that the one thing I would like the people to know that we cannot do everything. And, and, and the, but we can listen to somebody's problems. If somebody's got a problem, maybe we can help out a little bit. If we can't do it, send them to somebody that can. Be your brothers and sisters. Everybody out here is my brother and everybody out the, the, anywhere else that I meet. You're my brother and sister in Christ. You, you can't get away from that. We're brothers, we're sisters, and we should be joined together to help each other and no matter what the problem is in this country, if we do that, we won't have to worry about these politicians that don't know what the heck they're doing in the beginning. <laughs> Oh, there you are. It's the one where the honey talks. You know, the honey the speeches. They make you think you, they're going to do something for you. They don't do a thing. And the last eight years, what have we got done? Nothing. Huh? It's, it's worse. You see, but it's up to us to put the right people in, the Christ-loving people. If, if they don't have any spirit in them, the spirit of God, then we don't want them in office. Believe me, because we won't get anything done. A God-fearing person, I'll vote for her, but not for a, a, a dummy. <laughs> In closing, <laughs> I say to you that go in peace and remember that Deacon Ralph said, I love you. <laughs> <laughs>